Good morning, everybody. If you get you to come in and have your seat, and we'll get started. Thank you all for joining us today. It's it's, it's a great day. It's a it's a big day for the uh, the Poverty Reduction Advisory Council, and certainly the Prince uh, the the PEI government as we make history here today. Uh, my name is Marcia Carroll, and I'm the executive director of the PEI Council of People with Disabilities. I'm also a member of the uh, Poverty Reduction Advisory Council. Uh, Ten months ago, I, we were, I was asked to come on that council and do some work. I have to take a deep breath because I'm very excited. Um, so I was asked to come on the council and do that work with um, other members from community, government, and private sector, and we worked very hard um, to create a comprehensive plan. And that's what we're going to present to you today. So I hope that you uh, appreciate the work that's been done, and I think you'll be pleased with what you see. Um, I'd like to introduce some very important people here at the table. We have our Premier, Wade McLaughlin, Minister Monday, Gallant, uh, Brown and uh, Gina Yonker, who's uh, uh, also an advisory council member. Um, I see throughout the room lots of friends. Uh, 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 Minister Mitchell is here. I see Hannah Bell has come in the room and, and, and lots of important community members. So uh, thank you for um, uh, attending today. So um, uh, if I can just tell you a little bit about the council every year we serve. Uh, to provide direct services for 250 islanders living with disabilities. Um, and, and, and through the designated parking permit, we touch another 7,500 individuals. One of the main things we hear when we talk to people every day is how closely linked disability and poverty is and how they are so closely connected that it's hard to tell what comes first, disability or poverty, or poverty and then disability. So to be involved in this work has been um, very exciting and uplifting for me. Everybody that was on the council, both within government and outside of government, understood of the weight of the work that we were doing. We felt a huge responsibility to represent our communities and to listen to our communities. So there's a few people that I want to thank. I want to thank Craig Dalton and Deb for their extraordinary leadership um, and keeping us on, a, on track but also allowing us to dream big and to dream in technicolor and, and, not, and nothing was off the table when we had our discussions. I also want to thank Roxanne Carter-Thompson, who's been the chair of this whole process. I, uh, some days, you know, because some of these meetings could be quite contentious because we all were so passionate about the subjects. And Roxanne firmly believes in relationships and that we only get good solutions when we have good relationships. So thank you so much for your guidance and your leadership. I sincerely believe we wouldn't be here today without her commitment and her heart and her drive. So thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, I would like to give her a round of applause. <laughs> So without further ado, I'm just looking at my notes here. Uh, you know, uh, 
w going into the work again, I, I, we it, it felt like it was it, it was it, it did feel overwhelming, and there was a lot of work to be done. But through the process, we always had hope, and that hope came from the community consultation pieces that we did. And none of this would be possible without the commitment of islanders who come out. Hundreds and hundreds of islanders came out to every consultation. They spoke from their heart. They told us their truth, and we listened and we tried to capture their recommendations in this document. I hope they see that in the document today. And without further ado, let's have a let's hear from our dignitaries. So uh, I'll call on the Premier to come up and say a few words, and we'll go from here. Thank you. Thank you, Marcia, and uh, thanks to everyone uh, for being here, to the members of the Advisory Council, to the uh, many uh, good folks and uh, our public service who've worked hard on this, uh, and to the big community of advocates and people who know uh, the realities of uh, what uh, islanders uh, live with and what we can do, to, what more we can do. Uh, this is a, it's great, I'll say as Premier, to stand here uh, in this room and know the, the team uh, that's represented here uh, and that we are uh, in a position uh, to take some important further steps, let me say strides, um, and that we're doing it with the, the advice and the passion uh, and the knowledge uh, of the uh, Poverty Reduction Advisory Council, uh, led by Roxanne Carter-Thompson as chair and everyone who I, I know has worked hard on it, and that I am proud to be here with my colleagues, uh, Minister Tina Mundy, Minister Sonny Gallant, Minister Jordan Brown, uh, really important that our health minister Rob Mitchell uh, is here with us. This is a, this is a whole of government uh, effort, um, and indeed it is a, a whole of PEI uh, effort, and we're at an historic moment and opportunity. Since 2015, uh, we as government have worked with the community and with Islanders to, with the vision or, and the goal that everyone would have an opportunity to succeed to the best of their ability. And we recognize that there are, uh, throughout our community, and for a lot of different reasons and stories, uh, islanders, 153,000, who have unique needs that uh, require uh, different levels of uh, support and understanding and uh, effort, uh, and mainly uh, the confidence. Uh, that we have together, that uh, we can see opportunities and, and move forward together. Our province, uh, we like to say, is strong and resilient. Uh, and that indeed is true of each and every islander and not least of all of the community organizations and champions who uh, work with the community throughout our province uh, and who are so well represented here today. Earlier this week, uh, we announced that our province is in a, a favorable fiscal position. And that indeed does put us together as islanders and as a province and as a government in a position uh, to do more. Uh, it also was uh, revealed this morning that we have the most people working who've ever been working in this province uh, that gets uh, kind of captured uh, I think sometimes it gets captured a bit too, uh, so what should I say, simply in the unemployment rate, because really what we're talking about today is opportunity and employment. But the unemployment rate as of this morning is 7.2%, which is a remarkable thing for our province. <laughs> and it's precisely in that time of growth and opportunity that we need all hands on deck. And that's exactly what's been behind the work of the Poverty Reduction Advisory Council and our work as government and others will speak about it 
in greater detail. But let me mention some of the things that we've been able to do really from the very beginning of our government. The first program that we moved on was the generic drug program, which was a recognition that uh, you know, people who don't have coverage from their work or from uh, other sources uh, need a, um, I'll call it a safety net or a backup in that area. And it tells you how important it is to do the right things, uh, to go where islanders have needs and will respond, that uh, 21,400 islanders have registered for the generic drug program. Tells you a lot, huh? tells you a lot. We've been able to reduce electricity rates, we've been able to move uh, with steps to really gain some serious ground on home renovation, several programs. We've been able to move in housing, and you know, frankly, there'll be more said about that, but uh, we've gotten a lot done by now, but there's more to do and we know that. One of the programs that really tells a story about going going where islanders are and giving them an opportunity to exercise their, you know, take advantage of what's open to them, is a program called Be Aware, Get Your Share. And it was remarkable. It was, it started out, you know, talking to people about filing a tax form. <laughs> and so it's the kind of thing that when people hear about it first, it sounds like you're kind of threatening them or trying to catch up with them or whatever. But we stayed at it and we had some real good leadership in the team that did that. And in 2017, we had a 7% increase in income tax filings in this province. Many of them by people who didn't know any income tax, but by virtue of doing that, access to what collectively would be tens of millions, literally tens of millions, of uh, benefits that they were entitled to, to receive. We've worked on childcare subsidies, tuition, uh, student loan rebates, etc. But overall, we we know that this is not uh, something government does alone, or really that you do in any other shape than working with people who are in the community who understand what's going on at the grassroots, uh, who have the um, creativity, the heart, the experience to make uh, new solutions. And that's indeed what the work of the Poverty Reduction Advisory Council represents in its advice, but mostly as a, as a real thrust for Prince Edward Islanders collectively. And that's really the point I want to, to close on. This is about teamwork. It's about working together. It's about a whole of government approach for starters. Uh, it's about government with uh, community-based organizations. It's about uh, a community uh, that's working with people who are engaged and who believe that there's something for them. And I think that's really the, the key to, uh, to where we are with all of this uh, this morning. So there's been a lot done to get here. Uh, we've got some real uh, initiative on which to build. I think there are some people in the room who believe that we're already in a process of transformation uh, and that that is the goal uh, and that there is, of course, lots to do. Uh, so teamwork, uh, lots to do, um, be creative, uh, and know uh, that we will make uh, progress together. Uh, and you know, people have heard us, me in particular, talk about the mighty island. Uh, from the time we've started talking about that, I've never felt it was more real and achievable than it is here in this room this morning. Thanks to all of you for being here, and let's keep working.
Thank you, Mr. Premier. And I, I would like to touch on the point around transformation. And I know that with Minister Monday's leadership, we've been able to transform the social services uh, delivery system and the program that we offer folks. Um, and it's, it's my pleasure to introduce her today. She is a fearless leader around social justice and social change. And uh, she's uh, been giving us some great guidance. And I know that with her team of individuals within the, the end of the in the department, she takes them to task too, and and uh, they they really have been incredible through this process. So Tina, please come up and say a few words. Thank you, Marcia, and uh, thank you, thank you, Premier, and good morning, everyone. It is my absolute pleasure to be here today. And I'd like to welcome my colleagues, Mr. Uh, Minister Gallant and Minister Jordan Brown and uh, Regina Yonker. I'm so proud and honored to be at the table with you today. Um, I see many of our, our deputies, our senior staff, our directors. I see our community partners. I see individuals with lived experience. And I see so many faces out there that, um, that were really instrumental in, in directing us to where we are today. Today is an incredible day, and I'm really going to do my best to hold it together, because I won't be able to see my notes if I don't. <laughs> it is an incredibly important day, and it is the result of hard work and passion on the behalf of many Islanders. Today, we are launching a number of new initiatives that will benefit Islanders from tip to tip. As I look around the room today, I'm so pleased to see many of the faces that have played the significant role in shaping this Poverty Reduction Action Plan, those who have shared their lived experiences with us, and to our many, many valued community partners who deliver services each and every day. I thank each and every one of you for sharing your stories, sharing your lives with us. I'd also like to acknowledge the under the endless contributions of the Poverty Reduction Action Advisory Council, who worked side by side with us to develop our new plan and help Islanders who need it most. I'd like to ask each of them to stand and remain standing as I call your name. They are Chair Roxanne Carter-Thompson, Marcia Carroll, Dr. Gullrose Diwani, Chief Dave Poirier, Pam Large moran Regina Yonker, Ray Murphy, Andrea McDonald, Richard DeVoe, Marilyn Birch, Mark Spidell, Susan McKenzie, and although she did send her regrets, Tate Williams, who's not here, or Willows, who's not here today. The last 11 months, each and every one of you have invested your time, your energy, your talent, and your passion to ensure that every Islander has an opportunity to belong and thrive. I can never thank you enough for bringing the voices of Islanders to life in this action plan. And I hope everyone in this room will join together with me and give them a round of applause. Okay. Thank you. This was indeed a concerted effort between community and government, community organizations, partners, government departments, and islanders with unique diverse backgrounds and experiences, all with the shared goal of making our province a better place for all. We must continue to work diligently with islanders who need the most to empower them individuals and families to be healthy, secure, and active participants in our community. Our government believes that all islanders should share the benefits of a strong economy. 
And as we announced earlier this week, our province is in a strong financial position that allows us to provide more benefits for Islanders, and it is an opportune time to reinvest in Islanders, especially those who need it most. In the past few months, our government has introduced a number of changes. These changes include reforms to social assistance programs and services like increasing rent supplements, enhancing, enhancing wage and asset exemptions, and providing transitional benefits and additional supports to help people attached to the workforce. Today, we continue expanding on the great work and the transformation that is well underway. In this year's budget, we invested $500,000 to increase the social assistance shelter rates. Today, I am pleased to announce we will increase those rates by an additional 6%. We will also be increasing food rates by 10%. Again, this is over and above the 420000 that we invested in last year's budget. Both these increases will be in effect as of January 1st, 2019. These increases in social assistance rates will have a direct impact for Islanders and will put more money in the pockets of those who need it. I am also pleased to announce that we are developing the Secure Impro Income Program. This program will support Islanders with severe limitations to entering the workforce to meet the essential needs and enhance their dignity. The Secure Income Program will be introduced in the fall of 2019, and the annual investment in this program will be close to $1 million as part of our commitment to and supporting Islanders. We have heard from Islanders that at times it is difficult to find information, resources, and services that they need when they need them. This can be overwhelming at times, especially when you are making that first step. That is why we are developing a 2 on one service in partnership with the United Way of Prince Edward Island. 2 on one is a confidential, 24-7 multilingual service that will make it easier to connect Islanders with the right service or program that would be best suited to them. This will be launched in the fall of 2019. It is undeniable the role community partners and service organizations play in the lives of Islanders each and every day. Government will be introducing community grants to foster innovation and effective poverty reduction action at the community level. We have earmarked a quarter of a million dollars annually to support community-led initiatives because at the end of the day, we all share the common goal of helping Islanders so all can belong and thrive. The new and expanded social assistance programs announced today are a step in the right direction. They are anchored in our goal of helping Islanders. Working together is the right and only approach to addressing the impacts of poverty in our province. And it is with the strength of our size and our interconnectedness that we will make meaningful impacts on Islanders in each of our communities. It is safe to say that my fellow ministers and I are rolling up our sleeves and we're going to make things happen. Our commitment is to take action, to help Islanders get the most out of life. Minister Gallant and Minister Brown are here today with us, and they will be sharing with you next how our departments are working together so that all Islanders can belong and thrive in Prince Edward Island. I thank you all for being here today and all for being such an important part in this integral journey. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Monday. Your passion is, is evident, and uh, we know, I know this is an exciting day for you and, and, and for all of us that were involved in the work. And uh, now I'd like to call on Minister Sonny Glant to come up and say a few words.
morning, everyone. Bonjour tout le monde. Premier McLaughlin, Minister Monday, Minister Brown, Tina Yonker. Thank you, MC Mercia, and uh, Chair Roxanne of the Poverty Reduction Advisory Committee. Thank you all very much for your hard work on this, and uh, everyone in this room that part partook in it, and uh, staff, and the general public that's here today to hear the announcements. And I also want to thank Minister Monday for her words. This is quite an emotional time for a lot of people in our province, and it's, it's wonderful work that was done, and once again, I commend you for that. I look forward to continuing to collaborate between our departments as we work together for Islanders. I'm very pleased to participate in today's significant announcement, and as Minister of Workforce and Advanced Learning, I understand the need to work collaboratively across government and with our partners from community, business, and social organizations. By working together, we are removing barriers and creating opportunities for Islanders most in need. Lifelong learning, training, skill development, and connecting Islanders to our workforce are all top priorities for my department, our government, and for all Islanders. In my department, we support Islanders through their transition to the workforce through several programs that meet the unique labor market needs here in our province. Under these new initiatives, we will enhance our partnership with other departments across government, industry associations, and community groups to support low-income low Islanders transition to employment through the following three key ways. Number one, we will increase support for job readiness programs, particularly for social assistance clients who are working towards becoming employment ready. Currently, we support programs such as Trade Horizons with Women's Network PEI, Prosper East with the Adventure Group, Prosper West with the Youth Connection Employment with the East Prince Development Center, and Career Bridges with Tremploy, and the Work Experience Program with the PEI REACH Foundation. In future programming, we will focus on short group-based training sessions to enhance employable skills, job exposure, and coaching. We also plan to include more partners to social assistance clients so they can transition to employment in communities right across our province. Number two, our department will enhance support for pre-employment programming for clients with multiple complex challenges that could impact their potential for employment. Projects currently, support, projects currently supported with clients include the Propel program by the Women's Network and Women Moving on the East Prince Women's Information Center. Going forward, more community partners will be identified to support these initiatives. Number three, our department will work collaboratively across government and industry association to pilot programs specific to enhance skills of social assistance clients to gain the necessary skills to find and retain jobs in high demand sectors. With a strong economy and jobs available, there is no better time to prepare Islanders with the skills and opportunities to fill these jobs. These initiatives will be supported in key sectors such as agriculture and fisheries, aquaculture, seafood processing, tourism, and construction. Currently, we support nearly 300 Islanders every year through the various programs, as I just listed. With additional investments, we plan to invest an extra $1 million on these expanded initiatives and hope to double the number of Islanders we can support. Thank you. Thank you. As Minister of Workforce and Advanced Learning, one of my overarching goals is to develop a skilled work workforce and give Islanders the opportunity su to succeed. With this plan, we will continue to do just that. As the Moiti Island, we must never forget that our province's future success depends on the proper development and management of our most valuable resources, our people. With that, I thank you all very much for your collaborative effort. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Minister Gallant. We appreciate your words and uh, your wisdom. And now I'd like to call on Minister Brown to come up and say a few words. Minister of Education. Early learning and... Those names are wrong. Thank you, Marcia. And that actually is a good segue. Uh, I'm actually here both in my capacity as Minister of Education and Justice. And uh, poverty, of course, has... Uh, uh, reaches into both of those departments, and uh, it's our pleasure certainly to see 
uh, the, the cross-government uh, initiative here. Um, so my thanks uh, to you and to uh, Roxanne and the rest of uh, um, the Poverty Reduction Advisory Council for the work that's been done. Um, it's obviously very important, and uh, the crowd that's here today speaks to that, I think. Uh, and the number of uh, government departments represented here today, I think, also speaks to uh, the level of importance that we bestow upon that work. I'm very encouraged by the opportunities the new plan holds for children and for youth. <clears throat> if parents are living in low income, their children are too. But fortunately, living in poverty doesn't mean that a child cannot learn or succeed. I'd like to highlight three actions in the plan that will help level the playing field for children living in low income. Social assistance child inclusion allowance. A new child inclusion allowance will allow children on social assistance to participate in recreation and social activities that they could take part in before that they couldn't take part in before because of the cost. Beginning this spring, families who receive social assistance will receive up to $250 per year per child to allow their children to participate with their peers in important events like school trips and sports activities. <laughs> School food. Recognizing that, many, uh, that we have many students living in food insecure conditions, we are in the second year of a two-year demonstration project to develop an island-wide school food strategy. This is an upstream investment that aims to give students a better chance at learning by providing them with a healthy lunch each day that includes local and fresh ingredients. Projects that will be piloted in the near future will help to inform a larger plan in this regard. The School Food Initiative is supported by Home and School and addresses several key areas such as food literacy and student engagement. SEAM and STAR programs. The SEAM and STAR program helps students most in need to gain valuable life skills and work experience that help them transition successfully from high school to the workforce or further learning. Next year, we will be expanding the reach of the SEAM STAR program to include 10 project sites and 100 students with additional projects in high need areas. This will be supported by an investment of $650,000 to support 100 youth in the 2019-2020 year. I'm excited about the direction we are taking with these and many other actions in the plan that help island children belong and thrive. And I look forward to seeing them all roll out soon. I thank you very much, uh, particularly to the council for your participation and to you all for being here today, and we look forward to uh, putting our collective shoulder to the wheel and really making a material difference in the lives of Prince Edward Islanders, and particularly Prince Edward Island youth. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Brown. We, uh, we look forward to, to the continued work as well. Um, now it's my uh, great pleasure to call on uh, Gina Yunker to come up and say a few words. I didn't know Gina before this process, and we had been at a few community consultations, um, but we, we weren't what you could call friends. I feel we are now, and close friends. Um, we started out on this journey literally as I would pick her up and drive her, because uh, I always like to have someone to talk to on the way. And... Uh, <laughs> So, you know, literally one day we were driving home and we had just spent a long time in a really hot church and, and uh, you know, it was, it was one of those days like I, th there was where there was so much and we really felt overwhelmed what, with the task at hand and I was ranting and raving and going on about something. And Gina just very calmly looked at me and she said, Marsha, 
you have to trust the process. And I settled inside myself, and whenever I got wound up again, I said to myself, Marsha, you got to trust the process. So I thank you for your wisdom, I thank you for your friendship, and I look forward to what you have to say here today. She might be taller than didn't have a chance, never had a chance. <laughs> um, I need my hat, and anybody that knows me understands that joke. Um, I uh, want to thank you, Masha, for your friendship and your transportation. And, um, and we were talking, um, Premier, you were talking about transformation and uh, um, I, too, get emotional, so you may need to give me those Kleenex. Um, uh, we were talking about transformations, and, and uh, through, this, through this process, uh, I would have to say I am uh, been a bit transformed, too. So I need to thank the council. Um, anyway, uh, good morning, Dear Premier, and... Ministers Monday and Clant and Brown. Um, I, I am honored and thanking you for inviting me to, to be the one to, to speak and share. Um, I, I was married and uh, had, had three daughters. Uh, and um, after the breakup of uh, that marriage, um, things got um, really difficult. Um, and so I had to seek help, and, and that was with assistance um, and uh, the pl the plan originally was that it would just be a, a short term let's call it an adventure um, and it's lasted 18 years it is what it is it that's how I had to to do it and uh, so I raised I raised my daughters and all of them are successful, um, and I managed to feed and clothe them um, with little to nothing to spare. Um, I, all, I was always doing whatever I could for me and, and, and the girls to survive. Um, it was difficult by times, and, uh, and I reached out to other places and other community things that were going on to, to feed to feed and get groceries and, and things like that. Um, and, and so uh, the opportunity um, rose for, for, uh, for me to apply uh, for the Poverty Reduction Advisory Council and uh, um, my heart goes out to you for, for selecting me. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, it sounds funny, but it's, it's from my heart. So um, anyway, the role for me, um, I believe, for the advisory council was to uh, share my experience. Um, as someone who's lived in poverty and, and still does, or soon hopefully will be out of it, um, my contribution, um, I believe, was to sit with other advisors and adapt a strategy with solutions uh, to reduce poverty in PEI. Um, so that people aren't just surviving, but thriving. I got that quote from Tate, who's not here today. Um, <laughs> oh, please, more. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, been, there, there have been some really awesome... And, and I say that with capital letters um, of things that have happened since some of the new changes have been put in from social services. And uh, I, I, I got two I want to share, and if I'm too long, Roxanne, let me know. You got your clock on, I'm sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> any of these little jokes, ladies and gentlemen, is between the advisory council. We all know what they mean. Um, <laughs> but. I think one of the most um, one of the most thing, one of the most impressive things that happened to me, um, and I'm not bragging, but yeah, I guess I kind of am. Yes. 
um, um, was that the first month that the change came in, and I think that was July, um, I had a, a little um, get together. I had to to go on on a Monday, a little luncheon, and I met my daughter, my oldest daughter, and, and my two grandchildren, and and uh, I asked her to make some some muffins for me, and she said she needed flour and chocolate chips. And I'm like, cool, I'll buy that, no problem. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And then she had to go to the dollar store, so we went through the dollar store, and uh, we went through the dollar store, and, and, and Flo, that's my da oldest daughter, uh, the kids were looking around, and, and she said to the two grandchildren, um, I'm not buying you any treats today. <laughs> and I said, Savannah, if there's something you like, you, buy, you put it in the carriage. And, and I thought, which he picked out the two of them a chair, but well, you know, Spence is a boy, so he was going by and he saw some um, some motorcycles and and he's going cycle, 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 <laughs> and so he got that. And the point I'm trying to make is, I had three dollars in my bank account, so I could actually buy my grandchildren something for the first time ever. And uh, it was really cool. Um, and that, uh, anyway, so that's the first story. And uh, the second story was uh, being able to go to a grocery store and not worrying about what I could buy and what I couldn't buy. I bought fresh fruit. I had strawberries and I had grapes and I had, I don't even know what else, cantaloupe and, and stuff like that in my, my fridge. And I've never been able to do that. It's always been about bread, milk, um, what we really needed and, and what we really didn't. So um, those are the two stories that, that in this whole process have uh, really, really touched, um, touched, touched my heart. And... and uh, Sorry. Um, and so I, I uh, and, and one other really good thing is I can, if somebody calls and says, like, you want to go to the movies, or you want to go out to lunch, or you want to do this, or you're something, I can say yes or no, my choice. I don't have to wait for them to say, oh, I'm going to buy it for you, or I'm going to pay for it. I can say yes or no and make that choice. So you've put that choice back in my, my control. Um, and, and through working through this program, working with the advisory council, who you guys, I love you. Um, uh, I have a strong, I have a real strong sense of belonging and a purpose of of what of what we've been doing and, and what that's about. Um, and I have confidence in knowing if. And when, let me rephrase that, when, um, uh, when I'll be going um, back to work, I can go to work without knowing I'm going to be clawed back dollar for dollar. There's going to be some extra income allowed in, in, my, um, in my account. And um, so that's, that's really cool because that, that really hasn't changed since like the 70s. <laughs> I only know that because I read a book. <laughs> um, a real good book. <laughs> um, and, and I think I used a, a quote from that book a few times in our public consultation, so I can no longer use that. Turn. Um, anyway, just to... to uh, uh, my hope um, in the initiatives that we've turned out uh, today and this plan um, that it will continue to reduce poverty and build confidence in not just me, but in everybody in this room, in everybody that's on assistance, everybody in the, the retail community programs. Um, I could mention them all, but I'd forget somebody. Um, is that 
again, as seems to be the theme of today, is that uh, their confidence builds on our island and that everyone can thrive and not just survive. Um, and one last thing before I close. Um, this work, for me, um, has opened up doors that I never thought it would. Um, I would never thought I'd walk through so many doors and, and so many avenues. Um, I've developed lifelong friendships um, that will last forever and a new smile. <laughs> no offense, ladies and gents, but this is the best part. <laughs> um, and um, for anybody that knows me when this started, um, I know I have mentors in this room and uh, along with me being a mentor myself. Um, and, and so with that, I'd like to thank the Premier, the ministers, uh, for sharing some of these initiatives that support our Poverty Reduction Action Plan. So thank you. So powerful stuff here today, people. We are certainly making history. Um, through the process, through the, the community consultation process, uh, when we sat down and started to work on recommendations, 193, ooh, <laughs> So it was like, you know, we, so we've actually been able to whittle it down with, and, and consolidate, and we now have 67 recommendations that uh, community and government will work together to implement to fundamentally change our community. It's an exciting day. Um, we look forward to the work continuing. I thank you, Gina, for your heart and, and your honesty and your integrity, man. You've taught me a lot. Um, and I thank you all for being here, and it's a great day. I hope you get, have a look at the plan and see yourselves in it, and we go forward to continue to empower Islanders and, uh, and be mighty, as they say. Cheers. Cheers.